YouTube, this skip coming to you live. Start of your six aquatic kennels. Today's video, we're gonna go over the Labianum's Red Devil breed standards. I've already given you guys my Centinella Midas breed standards. Now we're gonna go over the Labianum's Red Devil breed standards. So when you're done viewing this video, you will have a complete understanding of what a Labianum's Red Devil should look like when seeking to purchase some. Let's see if I can feed smoke here. Put some food up here, but he's, he's too busy swimming around. I don't think he even noticed the tree. I have to stand up so he think I'm feeding him. Okay, there he is. He's discovered food. He's a hardy bugger. Smoke is a Midas. And you can see that he meets the breed standards of Midas. Flat, blunt, rounded face, stocky build. Now I want you guys to check out a few of these clips and we're gonna go over the Lady Adams Red Devil face, facial area, mouth, and build and see the differences between the two. Check this out. Okay, let's jump right into this topic. Here, to your left, we have a Jeff Raps. Lady Adams Red Devil. This photo is copyright, but this video is for research purposes only. And as you can see, they're giving you a side-by-side -side view of a Centinellum's pie ball, or Amphilopus Centinellum pie ball, and an Amphilopus labianums. So you can clearly see the visible differences between the two species. Right here, which we have focused on in my video where I explain the breed standards for Midas cichlids. Check that video out, if you will. We went all in this region right here, the head, the face between the eyes, the distance between the eyes and the lips, and the top of the head, the gill plate. The labiums red devil clearly has larger lips, clearly have a more slender, streamlined bill. And I mean lips are huge. Now I give it to it. Jeff Raps have some excellent Amphilopus wild caught Labianum's red devil specimens. Here's a Centronillum over here where you can clearly see the difference. Although this fish may be a tad bit smaller, but look at the look at how short and stocky the body is and how rounded it is. It's not an aerodynamic body. There are no big lips whatsoever. The distance between the eyes and the lips and the head are closer than the distance between the eyes, lips, and heads of the Lavianus red devil. Look at that huge gap between the two. There's a clear cut difference between the two species. Let's see another screenshot. Here they're highlighting it again. Huge lips, sleek aerodynamic body. Blunt lips and face. Let's check out another one. Again, clear cut, visible genetic differences between these two species. Here we have a barred variation of an Amphilopus labianums, aka the Red Devil. Look at the lips. 
This is a young specimen. You see, people, you have to understand this. There are multiple ways that a fish, or any species of that matter, can evolve. They can evolve by way of genetic mutation, crossbreeding, hybridizing. Those are different ways that a fish can evolve into something other than its original form. That if you take the stance that these beautiful specimens derive from the mitre species. Or vice versa, the mitres came from red devils. I disagree for those particular reasons and others. The pharyngeal jaw analysis states something totally different. Labia animus, red devils, pharyngeal jaws, and mitres pharyngeal jaws are totally opposites. In fact, if you look at the fish visually, they're polar opposites. One blunt, stocky, the other one sleek, streamlined, with huge lips. Unmistakably, Mother Nature is giving you a clue that these are two separate species. Even if even if you could prove that one came from the other, it has still evolved genetically different enough to be its own standalone species. And I'm going to reinforce that even when I close this video out. I'm going to go over that one more time for you guys so you can understand how we come up with a different variety or subspecies or different variety of cichlid species altogether. It's a process called evolution. And evolution is just that, a process that takes place within a genetic chromosome of these fish. And like I said, sometimes it's due to mutation, sometimes it's due to crossbreeding, and even in rare moments, it's due to hybridizing. Finally, another good photo besides a Jeff Rapp's photo. I don't want to seem like I'm just harping on Jeff Rapp's fish or his photos, but he seemed to just have the best quality photos for me to use for examples of explaining the topic at hand. But here's another prime example of the visual effect of genetic mutation. Look at this fish. You can see that this fish has a totally different food source from the Midas species altogether. They have to get down in crevices. They eat crustaceans. They eat snails and crayfish. They have to get down between rocks. And so, before I close this video out, I want to explain to you a little bit about genetic mutation and how it can affect the appearance of a fish. It can also affect the health. But like I mentioned, it can also affect the ability to survive and eat. This fish clearly has a different food source from others, such as the Midas species. Now, for years, decades, a lot of us have a habit of calling the Midas and the Red and the Labianum's Red Devil red devils so it just took on its own identity we're just so used to calling them that that and hybridizing between the two species that it's just it's just a regular occurrence now but that can't be further from the truth the true red devil is the labianums the amphilopus labianums or labiatus however you want to pronounce it there's a clear cut difference. Now I want to make this video short. I'm trying to speed through this. I, I hope you guys can bear with that. But I don't want to make it a long video where you have to just sit through a long video of me blabbing off. This should be a clear cut issue. There should be no mistake 
about it. Let's look at this other photo. Two young specimens. Now, I know a lot of people get confused. Quite a few of you guys get confused when they're young. Now, you have to understand. All cichlids go through a phase. Just like people do. Just like anything. As they grow older, their face fill out. Their bodies fill out. And they look different from what they did when they were younger. I don't look nothing like I did when I was 16. Slim, cut up, six pack. I don't have that anymore. So... I can see the confusion when you see young specimens and you may confuse a Midas with a labia's red devil because when they're young, depending on the angles, because you got to understand when you're videotaping these fish in aquariums or taking pictures of them, depending on the angle and the lighting, it could deceive you and you could think the mouth is a little more pointier than it really is. But when you have specimens like these before you, there's no doubt. No doubt. So let's close this out. So in closing, I want to show you a young specimen of a centronellums. But at a certain angle, it may appear that the mouth is pointier than what it really is. That is something that occurred, people. But in this video, we went over all the fish facts. All the evidence point to the fact that these are two separate species and they deserve their identity and respect for being two separate species. Wow. Now I hope you guys have a better understanding of the breed standards for the labianum's red devil and the differences between the two species. I know over the years, over decades actually, there have been a lot of hybridizing between the two. Now I know some people believe that the labianum's red devil derived from the Midas and some people believe that the Midas derived from the labianum's red devil. I disagree with that and frankly no one can prove their point either way unless you were there when they was conceived no one really truly knows the genetics are close when you look at their DNA composition but there are still enough variables and differences between the two species to make each species a standalone species. And what I mean by that is, even by the naked eye, you can visually see that the labianum's red devil, if you even had an inkling of belief that it came from a Midas, it had evolved enough, different enough to be a standalone species. It's polar opposite. Midas, stockia, Blunt, Bill, Labianum's Red Devil, more sleek, aerodynamic Bill, Midas, thin, short lips, Labianum's, huge, balloon like, loaded lips. Now I know there's some Labianum's Red Devil that don't have the huge lips like others but the bottom line is this the labianum's red devil is different enough from the Midas to be considered its own species and it, and it deserves that respect both species does so leave me some comments at the bottom tell me what you think and let's have a a mature and scientific and documented conversation or discussion about this topic. And with that said, the skip.